Neha was just 14 years old when her childhood came to a nightmarish end as one of Pakistan's child brides. They forcibly took me away with my younger brother and locked me in a room. Later, one man came and he raped me. When I shouted, they beat me and my brother. On the second day, they said, we are registering this marriage with the court. They said if I would not go with them, they would throw my younger brother from a seven-storey building. Neha's story is horrific, but it is not unique. Human rights activists say that 1,000 Christian and Hindu children are snatched every single year in Pakistan. They are raped and forcibly converted to Islam and then registered for marriages with Pakistani courts. Families say police are often complicit. Arzu Raja was just 13 when she was abducted. Her parents said after two days, police simply told them that their daughter was now the wife of a 40-year-old Muslim neighbor. The case was only investigated after her mother's pleas went viral online. Now their daughter is in hiding for her life from her abductor's family. I remember her all the time. She used to prepare tea for me every evening. I remember her smile and how she used to braid my hair. I miss her a lot. Pakistan's Human Rights Commission says the girls are often taken by Islamic relatives or by landlords to pay off outstanding debts. The abductors typically falsify the children's ages on legal documents. Some clerics have been arrested for performing these illegal weddings. Others justify them. Under Islamic laws, a wedding at the age of 14 or 15 is fine because it's the religious obligation of the parents. When she reaches puberty, they make her marry. Otherwise, she will, may, fall into adultery. Activists say this human trafficking has expanded this year. Due to coronavirus lockdowns, young girls are visibly out of school, more exposed to traffickers on the Internet, and families are more in debt. What's worse, watchdogs say the whole operation is organized. All these people are seen to be repeatedly being casted in different incidents. It's the same cast which is always engaged. So it, it gives us the impression that a mafia is at work. The goal is to secure virgin brides rather than seeking new converts to Islam. And older Pakistani men will pay big money for these trafficked children. Christians and Hindus are most vulnerable. People that report forced conversions can be charged with blasphemy for rejecting Islam. That charge can carry the death penalty in Pakistan. Neha has escaped. However, she's not yet free. She's hiding with the church. But for untold thousands of Pakistani children, there is no sanctuary, no respite from rape and abuse so long as authorities stand by and do nothing.